Please answer without using a calculator. 5 raised to the negative 3 equals which of the following? Is the answer A, B, C, or D? Let me give you a chance now if you'd like to to pause the video, try to figure this out. Take all the time you need, and then whenever you're ready, just unpause the video and we'll talk about it. Okay, so in order to get this right, the first thing to understand here is that whenever you have a base raised to a negative exponent, you can rewrite this as 1 over that same base raised to the same exponent, but the exponent's positive. So if you're not sure what I mean, let me show you here. So we can take 5 raised to the negative 3, and we can rewrite it as 1 over 5 raised to the positive 3. So this is just an exponent rule to keep in mind in case you get something like this on your test. So how do we finish this out here? Well, 5 raised to the positive 3 is the same as 5 times 5 times 5. So I know that 5 times 5 is 25, and then times another 5. How could I do that without a calculator? Well, I could write it like this, and then I would do 5 times 5, which is 25. I put the 5 down here. I put the 2 up here. Then I'd do 5 times 2, which is 10, plus another 2, which is 12. So I would see that the answer is 1 over 125. If you'd like to see a new video where I cover exponent rules like this one in more depth and include more examples, please let me know down below in the comments and maybe I'll make a new one. The next question is 14a plus 3a plus 16a. Let me give you a chance now if you'd like to pause the video, try to figure this out, take all the time you need, and then whenever you're ready, just unpause the video and we'll talk about it. So for a question like this, we see that each term has an a in it. So what we have to do here is just add up the numbers, and then we just bring the a along for the ride. So in other words, we're going to do 14 plus 3 plus 16, and we just keep the a there. So the correct answer here is B33. And if you weren't sure how to answer this question, absolutely no worries. All we care about right now is the learning. I'm excited to announce that this video's champion shoutout goes out to Charlotte, who said, this was my last test and now I'm officially a graduate. To all those who are scared, you got this. Believe and take a leap of faith. And I want to give Charlotte a big congratulations. And to those out there watching this right now, just remember what she said. To all those who are scared, you got this. Believe and take a leap of faith. John recently bought a VCR and went to a flea market to buy VHS tapes. At the flea market, VHS tapes are priced at $1.50 per tape. If John spent $16.50 in total on VHS tapes, how many tapes did he buy? Please disregard any sales tax. Now, I put the formula for total cost up here. If you want to use it in your answer, uh, just know that on your test, you'll if you want to use this formula, you'll want to go to the formula sheet and look it up. I'm just providing it now to save you time since we're just practicing. So let me give you a chance now if you'd like to, to pause the video, try to figure this out. Take all the time that you need, and then whenever you're ready, just unpause the video, and we'll talk about it. Now, I'm going to break this down using the formula here, and basically, we know that the total cost is $16.50. So where it says total cost in the formula, I'm going to write $16.50, or 16.5. So 16.5 equals the number of units times the price per unit. Now, we don't know the number of units, right? That's what we're trying to find. So I'm just going to call that A. And you could call it X, you could call it Y, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put A here. And the price per unit we know is $1.50, right? 1.5. So I have the equation set up, and the name of the game here is to solve for A. In other words, I want to get A by itself. So since I have A times 1.5, if I do the opposite of 1.5, that's division. So if I divide by 1.5, the 1.5s cancel out. But whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other. So I'll have 16.5 divided by 1.5 equals A. And if I do that in my calculator, I see that C11 is the correct answer. And the other day I saw an ad in the classified, someone near me is selling like 60 VHS tapes for five bucks. And I actually thought about buying it and, and I'm gonna pass on it, but I actually thought about it because who knows what could be in there.
What's the measure of the missing angle of the trapezoid? Is the answer A, B, C, or D? So let me give you a chance now if you'd like to to pause the video, try to figure this out, take all the time you need, and then whenever you're ready, just unpause the video and we'll talk about it. Okay, so the idea here is that for a four-sided plane figure, all of the internal angles will add up to 360 degrees. So what we have to do here is set up an equation and we're gonna set it equal to 360. So I'm gonna say 75 plus 100 plus 70 plus X equals 360. Now, why did I write plus X here? Well, I wrote plus X here because we don't know what this angle equals, so that's why I wrote the X. So what I'm gonna do is 75 plus 100 plus 70, which my calculator tells me is 245, and when I rewrite this, I'll have 245 plus X equals 360. And by the way, when you go in to take your test or when you're doing your own practice problems, it's up to you to decide if you wanna write out each step or not. For teaching purposes, I'm showing each step here. So we have 245 plus X equals 360. So the name of the game here is to subtract 245 from both sides. And when I do this, we see that X equals 115. So B is the correct answer here. In my opinion, the one that we're gonna go over next is the hardest question in the video. And if you disagree and you think a different question was harder, if you want to, please let me know down below in the comments. So without further ado, let's get into this video's champions challenge question. What is the equation of a line that passes through the points negative two, negative four, and negative one, five? And just to save you some time since we're just practicing, I went ahead and picked out the two formulas that you'll need to answer this question. But just keep in mind on your test, if you get a question like this, you'll wanna to go to the formula sheet that they'll give you and pick out the formulas. So let me give you a chance now to pause the video, try this out, take all the time you need. And then whenever you're ready, just unpause the video and we'll talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about this question. Slope questions are very important to understand for your test. Now. Nobody can guarantee exactly which types of questions are gonna show up on the version of the test that you get, but there's a good chance that you'll see some kind of slope question. So I like to cover these in my videos. And for this one, what is the equation of a line? The first step is to calculate the slope. And we do that using this formula right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the first pair of numbers, negative two and negative four, and I'm gonna label them. So the first number in a pair is always an X. So I'm gonna call the negative two X one. And the second number in the pair is always a Y. So I'm gonna call this negative four Y one. So now I'm gonna come over here to my second pair and I'm gonna call the negative one X two because the first number always has to be an X. And I already used X one over here. So that's why I label this X two. And my five is Y two. Right, I'm gonna label five as Y2 because we know that the second number in the pair has to be a Y and I already used my Y1. So now what I'm gonna do is come up into the formula and I'm gonna plug five in for Y2. I'm gonna plug negative four in for Y1 and then I'm gonna plug negative one in for X2 and I'm gonna plug negative two in for X1. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, don't worry, I'm gonna show you now. So for y2, I'm gonna use five, and then I'm gonna do five minus y1. And since minus a negative is the same as plus, I'm gonna write five plus four. So now for x2 minus x1, I'm gonna start by writing my x2, which is negative one. Then I'm gonna do minus x1. So I would have negative one minus negative two. And since minus a negative is the same as plus, I can make this plus two. And you can always just plug these into your calculator and you don't even have to do it by hand like this. But anyway, if you wanna do it by hand like this, you would do five plus four, which is nine. And then you'd have negative one plus two, which is positive one. So we see that the slope is just nine. So the slope equals nine. So now what I'm gonna do is come down to my second formula here and I'm gonna take nine and I'm gonna plug it in here for this little m right? Nine, I'm going to plug in for the slope. So for y1, what I have to do is take the same y1, my negative four, and I'm going to plug that in for y1. And for x1, I take the same x1, this negative two, and I plug that in for x1. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this formula, y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1, and I'm going to rewrite it. But when I rewrite it, I'm going to replace y1 slope and x1. And if you're not sure what I mean, let me show you. So I'd have y minus y1. So since minus a negative is the same as plus, I'll have y plus 4 equals 9 times x minus x1. So minus negative 2 minus a negative is the same as plus, so I can make that plus 2. OK, so now I have this set up. So what I like to do here is subtract 4 on both sides, right? So I have y plus 4. So if I subtract 4 over here, the 4s cancel out. And whatever I do to one side, I also have to do to the other. So I now have y equals 9, parenthesis x plus 2, parenthesis minus 4. So what I'm going to do next is distribute this 9. So in other words, I'm going to do 9 times x, and then I'm going to do 9 times 2. So let me rewrite this. So I'll have y equals 9x plus 18 minus 4, because I still have this minus 4. So what is 18 minus 4? 18 minus 4 is 14. So the final answer is y equals 9x plus 14. So B is the correct answer here.